Imagine spending $30,000 on solar, only to lose power in a blackout like everyone else. It's happening all the time. Grid-tied solar is being sold as freedom, but it's not. And today we're going to break down the four types of solar power systems so you know the facts and so you don't get snookered by solar salesmen. The Ready Light, into the country. Hey, I'm Nick and welcome to The Ready Life. We've lived off-grid for 25 years and helped thousands of folks gain independence from the systems that control their water, food, heat, and power. And today, you're gonna learn how to choose the right solar system that'll keep your lights on when the grid goes off. And if you stick with me, you'll learn which solar system gives you the control you're really after because you can live almost off the grid without cutting the cord completely. Here's how. Let's start with the most popular and the most useless option, <laughs> grid-tied solar. This system feeds solar power directly into your home and then back to the grid. It lowers your power bill, but it offers zero independence. I mean zero. When the grid goes down, this system shuts down too. Why is that? Because it has to keep the utility workers safe during an outage. So your system disconnects entirely. No power, no backup, and you're no better off than anyone else. I remember meeting a woman at a class in Alabama many years ago. She told me proudly that she'd gone off the grid with solar. And she had spent, I think, between thirty dollars and $40,000, if I recall right. But as I asked her some questions, something didn't add up. And it turns out that she had a standard grid-tied system. No batteries, no backup, just solar going into the grid. And she was devastated when I told her the truth that because she had a grid-tied system, her power was going to go out during the next blackout, just like everyone else. And sadly, her story is not rare. I've heard many more over the years. And here's the thing. Grid-tied solar is about only two things, lowering your power bill and padding the pockets of some solar company. If saving a few dollars on your bill is the only goal, then this system may be for you. But if your goal is blackout protection or energy independence, then grid-tied solar is going to fail you. So if the most common system isn't the answer, what happens when you go all the way to the other extreme? So here's our completely off-grid solar system. It means one thing. No grid, no meter, no utility involvement. We've been fully off the grid for 25 years now. Every light, every outlet, and appliance is powered by solar. Our batteries store the energy, and a backup generator fills the gaps during long stretches of cloudy weather. With this kind of system, you have a solar array, a battery bank, an all-in-one inverter, and a fuel-powered generator for backup during extreme cloudy weather. And of course, it all starts outside with the solar, and the solar comes into here and into this all-in-one inverter that is does a number of things, but one of the things it does is a charge controller that brings the solar power in and it charges up our batteries, which are right down here. And those batteries, and they're all charged up, then the inverter also pulls the power from the batteries and inverts it into regular household electricity that we can use in our home for everything, pretty much. And then in here, you can see is where the everything comes together. All the wiring comes together. The solar comes in down here behind this panel. And uh, you've got generator, fuel-powered generator can come in here. And this is the battery cutoff. And here is the uh, AC power running to our house, to our main breaker, uh, breaker box in our house. So this is how this system works. Over here is the uh, cutoff for the solar if we needed to turn it off for whatever reason. And uh, yeah, it's a, such a nice system. And that's what we use at our home. There's no utility to approve your setup, no net metering to register for, and no monthly power bill to pay. You're also safer from lightning surges and solar storms and even EMPs because grid-connected lines are long and they act like antennas. With off-grid, you minimize a lot of that exposure. But here's the catch. With a completely off-grid system, you're the power company now. If something breaks, you're the one fixing it. And if your system isn't sized properly, you'll know it the first time you hit three cloudy days in a row. So you need to know your power usage, you need to size your system correctly, and maintain it like your lights depend on it. Because they do. It's work, but for us it's totally worth it. 
We love the freedom, and if you're ready to take it on, it's a great path. But maybe you don't want to go all the way off the grid yet. Maybe you're looking for a more flexible system you can build in stages without giving up control. If that's you, we've created a free class to walk you through your best next step. It's called What You Can Do Now to Start Going Off the Grid. In this class, we show you how to choose the right system for your needs, how to start a three-step transition to your own hybrid backup system, and cut costs without sacrificing long-term reliability. It's 100% free, and you can join the class at thereadylife.com forward slash now. But maybe going fully off the grid feels a little intimidating. That's why there's grid tied solar with battery backup. This setup starts with a grid tied system, but then it adds a battery bank. So now when the grid goes down, your critical circuits can stay powered by your batteries. It's a big step forward, and because most homes use a boatload of power, you're probably going to install a critical load sub panel, which powers essentials like your lights, refrigerator, freezer, water pump, etc. And in more advanced versions of this setup, you can even charge your batteries from your solar array, not just from the grid. That gives you some real independence, but you're still tied into the net metering world. You're still dealing with extra utility red tape, approvals, regulations. So when does this setup make sense? Honestly, from my perspective, I would only recommend it in two scenarios. One, if you already have a grid tied system with micro inverters and you want to add battery backup, or two, if you really want to sell power back to the utility and they allow that. Otherwise, there's a much better option. And that's what I call a hybrid backup system. This is the system that most of you watching this are going to want to build. It looks and functions like an off-grid solar setup. In fact, here's my off-grid system, again, that we looked at earlier. But you want to know what would turn this off-grid system into a hybrid backup system? If you had a grid power running into your main breaker box, and then you ran a 100 amp line into these empty breakers right here, and then ran the outlet from this inverter to a critical load sub panel, that's the main difference. You simply add the grid as an additional source of power, and then you have a hybrid backup system. You stay connected to the grid, but you don't rely on the grid. This type of system includes a solar array, a battery bank, an all-in-one inverter like our midnight power all-in-one, a critical load sub-panel that's installed in your home, and a optional fuel-powered generator. It's not grid interactive, so you're not feeding power back to the grid. You're not dealing with net metering agreements. You're not giving the power company control over your energy decisions. And while local or state inspections do still apply, you skip the utility level red tape that often comes with grid tied systems. So here's how it works day to day. If the grid is up, the power passes from your main breaker box to the inverter to your critical load sub panel and powers everything. If it's sunny, your solar array charges your batteries, and if you want to, it can also power your critical loads to reduce your power bill. If it's cloudy or nighttime and the grid goes down, your batteries instantly take over and power your critical loads. If it's dark and the batteries get too low, you can top them off with your backup generator, and it all happens automatically. And here's the cool part. If your batteries are fully charged and your critical loads aren't maxing out the system, then the inverter can push power back into your main breaker box with all those big non-critical loads, and it can run some or potentially all. And if your system is large enough, it could even possibly end up powering your entire home off the grid and never have to buy power from the utility. The grid would truly be functioning as only one of your backups, and your power bill could go to nearly zero. The sky is the limit. And because you're using the grid as a backup, you save your generator for those rare occasions when you really need it, like when it's cloudy and the batteries are low and the grid is down. If this sounds like something you'd like to build, or even if you're still figuring out where to start, we've put together a free class to help you get started. It's called What You Can Do Now to Start Going Off the Grid. And we show you how to choose the right system for your needs, how to start a three-step transition to your own hybrid backup system and cut the cost of your power system without sacrificing quality. It's 100% free and you can watch it now at thereadylife.com forward slash now. If you wanna reclaim control of your power, you gotta go beyond the marketing myths. Grid tied solar might look good on paper, but when the lights go out, it won't save you. And batteries are really the key to all of this. 
There's so many options with batteries these days. So if you wanna see which route I went for batteries and why I did, then take a look at this video.